And today, though I'm the coach, I'm going to switch at the end of this preaching and I'm going to pray for people. Because I feel in my spirit that somebody might be needing prayer that is going to deal with certain things that they are fighting and going through. So I'm saying this as an early announcement so that you know that we are going to fight that thing. We are going to kill that thing by the grace of God. Uh, it was not a very easy night. Uh, very, 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 very demonic uh, night. And I know that God is probably pushing me to minister to people. And I will do that. Amen. With those few words, I want to welcome. I was telling him and the wife is like they just stepped out of British Airways. Like it's flying direct to Botswana. Like direct from Mahatse like this. I want to welcome Mr. Musoganeti to come and encourage us in giving. Let's just welcome with, with him with excitement as he comes to come and encourage us in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Beautiful. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Amen. Let me first of all greet our life coach, our apostle, our father. Come on, let's give it to him. Hallelujah. <laughs> We love you, sir. We appreciate you so much. And in the same vein, let me, in a very special way, greet our mother. It's so good to um, have a mother who is passionate about the things of God. Every time I have an opportunity to speak to this lady, she steers my spirit towards the things of God. She's always saying, what is it that we can do? This and that. And it really pushes me. And he's our, she's our mother. Hallelujah. Um, give it to her. Hallelujah. Um, let me greet all the pastors the leadership of the house and um, let me welcome every child of God that is here present may the Lord richly bless you amen I'm here to challenge and to encourage us to give to the Lord and I want us to go to the book of first Chronicles chapter number 29 we will read from verse number one to three my emphasis will be on verse number three so we'll read from verse one so that we we get it in context hallelujah first chronicles chapter number 29 we are reading from verse number one to three Please give it to us in the message translation. Media. Somebody pray for media. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, Is your heart in this thing? Is your heart in this thing? Okay, it looks like they are struggling. Oh, they're here. And then David, the king, addressed the congregation. My son Solomon was singled out and chosen by God to do this. But he is young and untested, and the work is huge. This is not just a place. I want you to notice what David says right here. He says, talking about 
the house of God. He says, this is not just a place for people to meet each other. But a house for God to meet us. I have done my best. This is David speaking. To get everything together for the building of this house for my God. All the materials necessary. Gold, silver, bronze, iron, lumber, precious and very colored stones and building stones, vast stockpiles. Verse number three. Furthermore, because my heart is in this, in addition to and beyond what I have gathered, I am turning over my personal fortune of gold and silver for making this the place of worship for my God. Look at your neighbor and say, is your heart in this thing? You see, the Bible introduces us to a man by the name David. And if you study the Bible correctly, you will notice that David was one of the few men in the Bible who were very special in the eyes of God. He was a man who knew how to arrest and capture the heart of God. And you see, no wonder the Bible speaks about David and says he was a man after the heart of God. He was a man who knew how to arrest and to capture the heart of God. You see, there are certain things that a man can do in this life that when certain actions are done, those actions can apprehend and can seize the heart of God. In a very prolific and a profound way. Certain actions that when mortal men begin to do, it gives them eternal mileage before heaven. You become valuable in the eyes of God. And God begins to see you differently. And you see, David was such a man. He had a habit of doing certain things that captured and left a mark in the heart of God. And you see, the scripture that we have read gives us a, an insight into the posture, into the makeup and the calibration of this man's heart. He had a certain level of understanding of what the house of God is. And you see, this statement really affected me. Um, go to verse number two where we were reading there. I want you to... Verse number one, sorry. This statement, Morute, really affected my spirit. It really affected my spirit. He says, this is not just a place for people to meet each other. So David is revealing to us a different dimension about what the house of God is. He says it is not just a social club. But he says it is a place where divinity meets humanity. 
and you see when I was meditating the Spirit of God began to whisper to my heart he says you see when a man partners with me to build my house that man becomes an instrument he becomes a channel he becomes a conduit by which he, he makes it possible for me to collide with men. So when you actively participate, you become an agent by which you sponsor the encounter of men with God. Verse number three. And he says, furthermore, because my heart is in this. Because my heart is in this. In addition to and beyond what I have gathered. So David tells us that he had gathered some things. He has been preparing for the building of God's house. And he says a statement. He says, because my heart is in this. That means your heart can be somewhere else. But he says, because my heart is in this. Look at your neighbor and say, where is your heart? We are in a season of building. Where is your heart? Is your heart in this thing? So he says, in addition to and beyond what I have gathered. So that means that there was a certain time that he began to prepare. He began to gather. And those things were already prepared. They were there. But listen to this key. He says, because my heart is in this, I am now turning into my private treasures. So this is not just ordinary giving. So you see when David says in addition to and beyond what I have gathered, I am now turning. So this speaks of sacrifice. It speaks and talks about doing more. It talks about moving from a place of comfort. You see, until your heart is in this, you will never rise to a dimension where you, where you will begin to give sacrificially unto God. Because my heart is in and you see church I'm here this morning by the authority of the apostle to announce to us that we are in a season where God is calling us to sacrifice he's calling us to do more than the ordinary that we've been doing. He's calling us to move from a place of comfort. He's calling us to a place where our hearts will be in this thing. A season where hidden treasures, hidden and private monies private savings they need to be looked into and you see when you read the same scripture 
In the King James, David says a very powerful statement. He says, because I have set my affection in the house of my God, I have given more than my private treasures because I have set my affection. So God is calling us for our hearts to be in this thing. Amen. May the Lord bless us. So, I want you to prepare your offering. And if you have your tithes, if you have your special offerings, your sacrifice, after you've given your offering, please do make your way to the front.